The, the first tree we're going to graft is the mountaineer chestnut tree. Your trees always graft better on its own seedling. So this is an actual seedling of the mountaineer chestnut. We've just pulled this out of a bag of peat moss. And you can see we start these down in here. And then when you see a sprout, you grab it gently. You don't want to damage these. Shake off all your excess peat moss. And you grasp it gently and just kind of come up. So I've got some excess peat moss. There's three. Let me see if I've got a fourth one in here started. There's a fourth one. Uh, and you occasionally get one of these. Kind of an oddball graft. Sometimes there's some material you can graft onto, sometimes you're wasting your time. We'll rinse that off and check it out in a minute. And you can also see we have a nut that didn't sprout. We'll set that aside for the moment. Take your peat moss that's left over and dump that back into the bucket for later use. Now the next thing you want to do is when you graft on this, you have to get rid of all this peat moss. Just run a little gentle stream of water. Now I don't mind if there's a little peat moss left down on the roots. We're not going to be bothering the roots very much. And you'll see later, I'm going to want to prune these. But this has already been, the taproot's already been damaged. You already see a lot of good lateral growth on this one. The first tree we're going to graft today will be of the Mountaineer Chestnut. Uh, we've got some good pieces of cyan wood that have been cut previously. Wipe off some excess moisture. And there's a few things I always have set up ahead of time to make your, your job easier. Uh, you'll see just some simple uh, crafting sticks, uh, cheaply bought. I'll explain to you later what those are used for. I have my Felco number eight pruners. This is a simple green-handled laboratory knife that's used in most dental offices. And a pocket knife. Just use a middle blade as a nice size blade to work with. I always keep a sharpening stone handy. Uh, you have more grafting projects ruined with a dull blade, so keep that handy. And I'll explain to you what the Ziploc bags and rubber bands are used for in just a moment. But let's go ahead and repair, uh, prepare a few of the cyan pieces. And you can do this with one or two buds. I'll try to just take one bud. Once you have those cut, you want to make a little wedge cut at the base. And then you 
you'll see a nice little wedge at the base. Might make that even just a little thinner. second one. Next thing we're going to do is prepare our rootstock. And these are ones that were previously rinsed. Now typically I'll prune the root at the base to remote lateral growth, but you can see this has already got quite a bit of good lateral growth. This probably should have been grafted a little earlier. Now here's what your jumbo sticks are for, or your crafting sticks. Learn from my mistakes. I've done many of these without the stick and cut my fingers many times. So what you can do, first I'm going to cut the very tip of this off. Here's where the green handle knife comes in. And come right in the middle. Try to lay that down on the table a little better if I can. Now, once I have that initial cut, straight down through here the rest of the way. And you can actually even cut into the root a little bit. Need a little more room to work with. I'm going to split all the way through. Now take one of your prepared signs. Set that right down in, that makes a nice little splice graft. Now you'll take your rubber band. And I'll come down here well onto the root. Loop it through once. Now, once you have that started, come around the root a couple times. Now you can come up on your little stem. Make sure that right in the middle. And wrap it several times. And loop it back through on itself at the very end. Now the rubber band is secure. You have one completed graft. I was going to do one more. Now here's one with a nice long tap root. So we're going to cut that off right about here. And again, it promotes some nice lateral growth, lateral roots. And you'll also notice what I have over here is a bottle of Lysol. If you'll keep your blades very clean between each graft, you're going to lessen any fungal or bacterial contaminants, which may lower your success rate. And you'll get many variations of how this sprout or epicaudal emerges from the root or what's called the hypocaudal. In fact, this type of graft is called a hypocaudal graft. So let's do the same thing. Let's take the top of that off. And 
And again, we'll start well down here into the root. In fact, I've done several of these where I just completely eliminate the stem and graft into the root. You'll see I damaged that one, so let's work with this. Let's go and cut this off where I've damaged it. So you have a very short stem to work with now, but we can come right down into the root with our graft. I'm trying to push those roots back out of the way. And you have a second completed graft. Now here's where your Ziploc bag comes in. Always label your graphs. And I usually do two graphs to a bag. And I'll write down that that was a hypocaudal graft and the date we're doing this. And I also recorded over here. Here was my grafting notes from 2015. Let's start with some new ones. I think I need a new pen. Then you write down your root source. And these were self seedlings. Now we're going to take the bag we just laid and fill that with some moist peat moss. Now, if your peat moss, you just want it damp enough to settle the dust. If you were to squeeze this and squeeze out water, it's too wet. And you can see we're getting no water from this, just some damp peat moss. Uh, and I know there are those out there that say that's not good to the environment to take harvest all this peat moss it's just something I've always used it's what I'm familiar with I may try in the future to try some other material but I'll fill this up Once I got that back about half full, I'm going to make a little spot down there, like a little trough, and I'm going to set our completed grass down in here.
see the only thing that's covered is the nut and the graft union. Now this method, you don't need any grafting wax whatsoever. No sealer. Because once I seal this bag, it's almost like a little mini greenhouse. And what I will do is I will set it back over here next to these artificial lights. Actually right here with this year's pepper plants. And we will check back on this in a few weeks. And see if these things take. Okay, just a quick update on how the Mountaineer graft is doing. If you can see from the labels, these grafts were done on March 26th. Today is, and you can see the nice layer of humidity inside the bags. And uh, here we are on April 5th, roughly, roughly 10 days, and you can see the bud now, how it's swollen and green on this one, and also on this one over here. A little more difficult to see from this angle. Now at this stage, the buds are swollen, turning green, too early to try to harden these off. Uh, we'll wait until you get about two to three or four leaves on this and then we will harden those off. All right, for those of you who have stuck my video out this long, it is now Sunday evening on April 10th. So just about two weeks since we did the grafting of the Mountaineer chestnut tree. And again, you can see there's still plenty of moisture in the bag and if you look, you can see quite a bit of leafing out in here. Now a few days ago we checked the buds were just beginning to swell and turn green, but if we look today, try to enlarge that a little bit, you'll see how much these things are starting to leaf out after just two weeks after the initial graft was done. Let's go over to the other bag, and same thing, look at all the leaves after just two weeks. So, at the, in the next part of the video, what I will show you is how to start to harden these things off to acclimate them outside of the where it's not so, uh, with a lot less humidity outside of the Ziploc bag. days later, since we last looked at the grass, and again, you can see plenty of moisture inside the bag, still nice and humid. And if I bring the bag over where you can see inside of it, you can see how well these grass are leafing out. They're now at a stage we're going to start to prepare these grafts to transplant. Now, if you tried to transplant at this stage, straight from the back into soil, the grafts are going to die due to the shock from going from a humid environment to a very dry environment. So what I've learned is to go really high tech here. You use the toothpick. And we're going to make a few little holes in these bags to slowly vent off some of the moisture. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do the same thing to the other mountaineer grafts. Now what I will do is let that over 24 to 48 hours, let that slowly vent a little of the moisture off. And after that length of time, we'll start to open the bag just a little at a time for another day or so, so that by this weekend, we should be able to transplant those. All right, now we're back here. We've already punched the holes in these bags. I should have done this a day or so ago, and I just got busy. So you can see the grass are really a little bigger than I'd like them to be at this stage. We have to vent off a little more of the humidity so in addition to the holes, what we're going to do now is open the bag a little bit to vent off a little more air, a little more humidity. And then we'll let the bags adapt a little bit through that today with the, the, the tops just slightly open, draining off a little humidity. And then maybe by Sunday we can get these transplanted into some pots. All right, now it's been a few days since I gradually opened the Ziploc bags to let some of the moisture out. Now after a day of the moisture venting out of the bag, you'll see the next thing I did was I opened the bag up a little further and I keep it propped up with a toothpick. Let that drain off for an additional day or so. 
Now, if you look inside the bag, you can see two healthy looking graphs. They haven't, gra they haven't crashed due to the change in the humidity. Now we're going to transplant these into their pots. So the first thing you do, there should be a pretty good root system under this. Don't grab the plant by the top and yank on it. Sink your hand in underneath. And you don't need to wear gloves. I do this simply because I get tired of cleaning the peat moss up from under my fingernails. But you don't have to wear the gloves. But I'm going to sink my hand all the way underneath one of these plants. And what you might find is they've grown so long that the roots are fused together. If that's the case, bring both plants out together. I'm going to hold this over the pot. And now just kind of gently tease the roots apart. All right, and I'll set this one over here for the time being. I'm going to shake off a little of this peat moss. And you will see, look at that nice mass of roots. It's done very well, and you'll look at the top of the plant, nice healthy green leaves. It's done well. We need to get rid of the rubber band that we put on here. So I'm going to take a pair of tweezers. We're going to find the end of the band. I'm going to tease that loose. Just kind of go around bit by bit. Just do this slowly, don't be in a hurry. Now, if you can look, you'll see a nice graft union, a lot of nice healthy callus tissue. This graft's done very well. So now we're going to try to make enough room down inside the pot. But the roots aren't crowded. Make a little space down in here. And then bit by bit, we're just going to add a little soil then around this. And what I use, I just use an old cup. Just start adding a little soil bit by bit. I'll build the soil level up just to the graft union. I won't go much any further than that. Now I'll go ahead and take care of the other graft and we'll water those and label those. And in a few weeks I'll do add another little bit to the video so you can see how they've done and continue to leaf out. But there you have a completed graft of the Mountaineer Chestnut. Well calloused, healed, and leafing out. We are now about two weeks after the Mountaineer grafts were transplanted. As you can see, uh, plenty of good growth, nice healthy green collar, and they're adapting very well. Uh, next step, what we will want to do, these trees, since they're grafted from lateral buds, have a tendency to want to grow outward. We'll probably do some sort of a stake, get a little more upright growth out of these. 
but essentially we've accomplished what we've wanted to with these graphs. Next step will be to harden these off outside and get them into a permanent location.